Hi and welcome back again. So, what we this video is more about trying to upgrade this firmware on your Mega Squirt box. Um, now you might have come across how oh, well you know this Mega Squirt box works quite well, and I want to do more, and uh, you would like to upgrade your firmware. Now I've already upgraded this one, so what I'll do for all intentional purposes, I'll uh, go through the steps to change it to a different version of firmware. Um, and I'll take you guys through the steps. Um, one of the things you are going to need um, when doing this is, uh, especially if you're using a USB serial controller, um, which most computers these days will have to use, uh, use uh, since they don't no longer come up with a um, serial port. So um, I'll just show you what you need to do beforehand. If you've got into the screen and you've got that, you can actually see all of this sort of things happen when you fiddle with the stem. Then you're on your way to success. So first thing you're going to do is just make sure that you've got what port you're using to um, to communicate with your uh, Mega Squirt unit. Now I'm using a Mega Squirt one. I'm not sure how it works on a Mega Squirt two unit, but um, I suspect it will be very very similar. So I want to make sure that I know which communication ports I use, and at this point it is communication port three. Right. So what I'll do is I'll shut this all down because we no longer need that. Now in order to do this. There's a couple of things you need to do beforehand. Um, one of them is you need to take the top of the box off. Um, to do this is very simple. Simply remove the lid with the old Phillips screwdriver, and then you need a piece of wire. I just use a piece of wire that I uh, been twisted and bent the ends over, and that suffices as a bridging tool. And what you're going to do at some particular point during this, you are going to install that bridging wire on those two pins over there which is the boot bootloader per terminals now at that point I will show you guys when to do that when it's done it will look something like this right so how do we do it well a couple of things of that that is of some importance number one is that if you're going to do this and you're going to do it on a car um, word of advice disconnect the coils. Um, I don't like doing it in the car because I don't like flashing it on a unstable power supply. So I always flash my ECU with a mega stim. Um, and, and if we go back onto here, that's what the mega stim looks like, and it uses an external power supply to power the board up. So what I'll do is I will definitely be using my mega stim, and then I'll do my bridging pin there. Now. There's a number of ways of doing this. Um, I've only really used one way. The, the other way is you can go through um, start all programs, go down to Mega Squid, and there you've got your Mega Squid downloader. I don't know, I've never used it, so I'm not sold on it. Um, I do believe it does work. Um, but, you know, we're trying to flash a fairly old one, a Mega Squid one, so I'm not going to use that method. So the method I use is very simple. Go into my computer, go into local drive disk C, program files, and then mega squid. And then you're going to be presented with all of this, this stuff over here. Now, what I would normally do is you would know what which one you want to download. In my case, I want this 029Y4 firmware. Um, if you want to find out more about these, that is, will be available in the um, MS um, forums, and I'll make sure that I post it in the description how to get to that. So what we'll do is um, we we'll simply open this up here, and there's a boxy download firmware. Well, for me it's pretty easy. Click on that. Now it's going to ask you uh, what you want to do. Um, what I would suggest is at this point make sure that your RPMs is turned down on your Megastim. Um, the warning there says that it will wipe out all settings on your Megasquit. That is quite true. It uh, forgets everything if it was programmed. Um, so if you were going to uh, have a running machine or a running vehicle, uh, you want to save your MSQ file beforehand before you do this. Um, so what we'll, we'll fire away. Uh, in my case, I do use port 3. So I'm just going to simply hit port 3. Um, are you upgrading from a standard Mega Squid code? Well, 
Yes and no. Um, I'm not really because I've got the high res code loaded. Um, but for this test, we're just going to go yes. And say so power down the mega squirt, which I have done now. Install the boot jumper wire, which I will do right now. It's going to be pretty tricky since you can't see what you're doing. Got the wire installed. Now it says turn it on, which I'm just done, and press any key to do. Now what you'll see is um, as this is going along, um, these little line counter is counting up. Now these are about 1,713 line, uh, 730, 1,730 lines of um, code that's going in there. Um, what I normally do is uh, when this line counter hits about a thousand I will uh, simply remove the boot jumper wire while it's going um, although it doesn't tell you to do that um, it actually does work quite well um, because what the, what the software does is it restarts the mega squirt uh, box and while the bootloader is in there it prevents it from loading the firmware um, hence you can't actually get it going so we're just about at a thousand there I'm just taking my little trusty old boot wire out and I will just quietly wait for the software to finish what it's meant to be doing and we're almost there 